Welcome to Installing and Deploying Windows 10 with Enterprise Tools. In this module, we're going to build on the concepts from the WADK discussion and show how administrators can apply them in a more formal and automated way. Now, the topics we'll explore here include Microsoft's deployment scenarios and how they map to the tools that are available, how to build and capture a reference computer with the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, configuring end-user operating system deployment with the MDT, a look at PowerShell for deployment scripting, and a few words about Microsoft's gold standard deployment tool, System Center Configuration Manager, or SCCM. Well, let's begin by clarifying some Microsoft deployment scenario lingo. By the way, the MDT required version for Windows 10 deployments is MDT 2013 Update 1 or newer. The classic three scenarios are high touch, light touch, and zero touch. High touch just means that the installer is closely involved with the installation, initiating it and shepherding it through to completion. You can have a high touch install with standard retail media as it comes from Microsoft or a custom image that you may have built with the WADK tools. Light touch, normally associated with the MDT, has to be started by a human but then runs in an automated way. And zero touch requires no user involvement, such as in a scheduled install. Now that requires System Center Configuration Manager or a similar tool, plus some money. SCCM leverages some of the task sequences in the MDT, by the way. Well, regardless of the scenario, a deployed Windows 10 system requires immediate activation. The Volume Activation Management Tool, or VAMT, comes with the WADK and provides a management console for activation. If you have Server 2012 R2, you don't have to download this. A KMS server is a machine on your network that gets a key from Microsoft. Windows clients use DNS to find the KMS server, and they activate from the KMS server initially and then every six months thereafter. Now, for newer versions of Windows, Active Directory activation works like a KMS without requiring a separate server. Finally, multiple activation keys activate Windows without the requirement to periodically reactivate. For example, MAKs make sense for users who are on the road a lot. So what can you use the free Microsoft Deployment Toolkit for? Well, it can build a light touch installer boot image that kicks off a user-friendly deployment wizard. It can help you build a reference computer. It can capture an install image from that reference computer and build media for the wizard-based LTI deployment. And it can build a VHD for those more recent versions of Windows that can perform a VHD native boot. Now, speaking of which, the VHD native boot is a handy alternative to the old dual boot technique, handy in that you don't have to repartition your hard drive to be able to boot two different operating systems. Windows 7 debuted this capability, and later versions support the newer and more robust VHDX format. So why use the MDT versus the WADK alone? Well, it can shield you from some of the WADK's complexity. For example, answer files and user state backup and restore via the USMT. Its built-in task sequences provide some welcome ready-made automation and everything runs in a single console. You can also monitor the process to some degree and you have good control over how much user interaction you want to offer during the install. Now the MDT requirements are .NET Framework 4.5 or newer, the WADK for Windows 10, and plenty of hard drive space either on the MDT machine or the network folder you intend to use for the deployment share. More about that in a moment. The pre-built task sequences in the MDT cover a variety of scenarios, including building a standard client, replace and upgrade scenarios, server scenarios, and deploying to VHD for that native VHD boot capability we just mentioned. Setting up the MDT involves installing the WADK, running the MDT installer, creating a home for all the files that you'll be working with, importing operating system files, for example, from a retail DVD, 
and importing any driver or application packages that you want to add in to your ultimate image. Well, let's demo the MDT installation and setup. So I've downloaded the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit MSI file. I'll double click that to install the MDT, accepting the terms and the defaults. And once that's done, I can go to the Start menu and choose All Apps and scroll down to Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. And there's the Deployment Workbench, which is the primary console. So we'll run that. Now, the first thing to do here in this console, as indicated by the Actions pane to the right, is to create a new deployment share. So we'll do that. This is where all of our files are going to be stored. Um, in real life, we would probably specify location on a file server. For demo purposes, the uh, local C drive is fine. That will set up a hidden share called deployment share. There are some options here that control the behavior of the deployment wizard. We can change these at a later time, but we can see that there are default check marks for asking if a backup should be performed, asking if an image should be captured, which we would like to do if we're setting up a reference computer, ask if BitLocker should be enabled. We'll leave the defaults. And the deployment share has been populated. And now we can take a look at what it contains. Nodes for applications, operating systems, drivers, packages, task sequences, etc. So what we should probably do next is populate the deployment share with an operating system. So we can right click here and choose to import an operating system. Since we're building our reference computer, we will most likely be inclined to choose a full set of source files rather than a custom image file. I happen to have a Windows 10 DVD in the drive. So we'll point to that and accept the default destination directory name and the operating system import process will begin. This will take some time. And now that the operating system import is complete, we can click Finish. And now we can see that we have a Windows 10 Enterprise operating system imported into the operating systems node. Now, if we know that uh, many of our systems will also require a specific audio driver, we can go to out-of-box drivers and import drivers for that audio device. And then we can choose to import the driver package. And the Connexent Media audio driver is now loaded and available for including in the image. So once you have loaded the operating system and any drivers that you need, you can also choose to load some applications up here. The next steps will be to select a task sequence to actually create the media for performing a deployment. And we'll look at that in the next demo.